Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hey guys, welcome to Flat Top King. Hey, today is all about the initial voyage on the new Blackstone griddle. We got it from Lowe's. It's that new griddle plate. It's called the Omnivore griddle plate. There's supposed to be a lot of technology behind it, some goods. Uh, we're going to put it to the test today. So what better way to put it to the test? Lumberjack breakfast, big breakfast, everything that I want in a breakfast. Plus, it's going to teach us some things of how the griddle reacts in certain spots. You guys sit back and let's make a big breakfast on the new Blackstone griddle. All right, there's always a method behind the madness. Today is no different. I have my muffin mix pancakes that I swear by. I have a cup of milk, an egg, a little bit of vanilla, a pack of any type of flavor that you want. Our kids love chocolate chips. They're in their testing phase for school right now. So I promised them I would make them pancakes in the morning so they got a big full belly, just like daddy. And then we got a cup of basically pre-made biscuit mix. I mean, not biscuit, pancake mix. We've tried all brands. Not one has been better than the other one. So we're gonna get this started because it needs a couple minutes to set up. Very easy, break that egg. All right, first things first, we mentioned it when we did our review and seasoning on the Blackstone. And although I got a little bit of frustrated, I wanted to make sure that I had a brand new day, the griddle would calm down completely. It's been on low maybe about 15 minutes because I just want to see what low means. And this is the response that I'm getting. The same thing that I got the other day. 390 on low, 450, 415 ish, and 335. So the same thing's holding true. It's not a true low. I know we all can agree we like cooler spots on the griddle, but when everything's on low, let's keep it off of 450, let's keep it around 350. So our pancakes and our hash browns are gonna be a telltale sign of your hot spots. So anytime you get a new griddle, it's a good idea to learn your hot spots immediately so you're not you know, uh, worried about what you're cooking or whether or not you messed up. Sometimes it's the temperature of the griddle. So you guys are gonna see that through this cook. First things up, sausage and bacon. Just about as easy as it gets. If you guys can freeze your sausage just for a couple minutes, maybe about 30 minutes from the refrigerator, maybe 45, it's just a lot easier to cut. It doesn't gum up on you as much. So we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do the same thing with the idea with a sausage, okay? We wanna put it in certain spots to be able to see the browning and the equal cooking zones that this thing is supposed to have. We're just gonna place our bacon on there, same idea. All right, I'm just prepping some onions and some jalapenos for me and my hash browns. There's so many times in this video, I'm always focused on what's the best angle for you guys. And a lot of times I forget about me. So today, this is how I'm gonna make my hash browns for me. So there we go. So a little jalapeno, a little onion, and that's gonna go on our hash browns. All right, you're starting to see the rawness, which is basically following that straight line about how the griddle itself has hot spots. It's gonna be a lot hotter on the end, like uh, about maybe, yep, about maybe the width of the uh, your bench scraper all the way along that edge. You can tell the difference between how this bacon's frying here versus your bacon up here. This one barely has heat on it and you can see the difference, okay? See how even browning that is? Because it's in the sweet spot, okay? Let me show you the uh, sausage real quick, okay? We put the sausage up on top, up on the bottom, and on the side. See how there's no browning? See the difference? Look at the difference in your temperature zones. All this matters when you're new to griddle cooking. See the light color? Because it's not edge to edge heating. So to help with the sides being cooler, one thing people could do is they could turn their outer burners on medium. Which is why we do these videos. You know, more or less, it's about getting people to cook faster, better, right? Better, we have so better many, faster. what I'll say? Faster, better. Close enough. <laughs> There's so many times that we get comments on why they messed up. And you see the responses below, especially on the Grubber Group and stuff like that, and I cringe. Although people have their own opinion, 
you just got to balance your experience with what's reality. Sometimes it's not the person's fault at all. Sometimes it's literally the griddle's fault or the technology in the griddle that doesn't allow them to do what they want to do or they don't know how to adjust to it. So when we do videos like this, this is just hoping to get the beginners out there that's got this brand new griddle some insight on how to correct some of the mistakes that we're going to find. And that's basically all it is. We're, we're helping with the learning curve. Yes. All right, so now that we've showed you the cold and hot spots, now it's time to, you know, you have to adjust your food. This one's still raw. We've got some that are already, you know, pretty close to done because of where it was on the griddle. So that's important when we talk about um, uh, instant rate thermometers. That's probably my number one advice for anybody starting on griddles is uh, griddle cooking or any type of cooking. It's just a simple insert rate thermometer because you just never know. So now I'm going to start moving the bacon around, the sausage around, and trying to get it off the griddle so we can keep moving on. You can still see here that this bacon is still pretty much, I mean, it's nowhere near the inside of like these. So we're going to just move these to the good side and put the ones that have already cooked a little bit into the non-cooked zone. And if you're new around here, you know we like our bacon extra crispy. Hashtag bacon dust. Now that we fried our bacon to a pulp, which is kind of like a personal preference. Matter <laughs> of fact, it's not. It's my wife's preference. <laughs> and any person out there on the griddle knows that if you don't make it the way your wife likes it, then you might as well not cook at all. <laughs> Husband of the year. 17 years in a row. <laughs> All right, we're just getting the griddle cleaned up for the next phase. The next phase is pancakes. I didn't really want a lot of that residual um, bacon or sausage grease. You can definitely save it for your hash browns. You can save it for your cooking. I just wanted more of a true accurate reading when I do this, because I think it's extremely important that when you get a new griddle, that the more you learn about it before you even start, the better off you're gonna be, the better, the happier you're gonna be, all part of it. Okay. All right, we're selling low, so you're pushing 388. What does that say? 434, mm -hmm. 377, 382, 377, and over here it drops to about 330, okay? So I just want to reiterate a little bit. So you made the comment or the question, or you asked the question, why wouldn't you just turn the side burners on more? Well, the problem with that is you're having more BTUs heat up the griddle. Therefore, if this heats up, this is bound to heat up because it's all one unit. So now you're taking something, you're not gonna be able just to heat this up only. So this being 425 to 450 is gonna heat up to 450, 475 while this heats up. So you're just compounding the problem. I'd much rather keep it on low. We can adjust the knobs as we cook on it. That's not about today. Today we're using all burners. Um, the most important thing is, is learning your hotspots truly. Then you can adjust your knobs based on the information that you're given, okay? So just because you turn on your right and left burner higher, that does mean that your middle is gonna build up. All right, by doing these pancakes, I'm doing the same exact thing. It's not about filling up the griddle as much as it is. I always feel like pancakes can find a true color coordination, color combination of hot and cool zones. This is exactly why we do these breakfasts. There's a lot of information that can come out when you're new to griddling for the first time or you just bought a new griddle and you want to check the hot and cold zones before you even start. All right, here we go. So what you're looking for is color. Obviously you need to pay attention to when your pancakes are ready to flip. So here's what it tells us. You can see the tops of these are lighter color when you flip them over, which is what we kind of expected because that top zone doesn't get near as hot. You can even tell by how it doesn't season. So the bottoms of these should be darker, okay? Over here, you can definitely tell that the hot spot's right in through here. This was one of the very last ones to be put on the griddle, but they're flipped just basically at the same time. And you can tell that this one's hotter than this one, but this one was the first one down. So it's little tips like that that's gonna help you be a better griddler faster and this is why we do it. All right, I'm just gonna start the vegetables a little bit to get ready for a hash browns. All 
All right, with the hash browns today, I'm using beef tallow. You don't have to. I'm just trying to get rid of it. You could also use what? Your favorite cooking oil? Avocado oil. You can use a little butter. I'll probably throw a little butter down once we flip them. This is the same thing. I'm looking basically for like four patties and I'm looking for even browning. All right, what's the deal with, with hash browns? We still get all kinds of comments that their hash browns were gummy and not brown or crispy. So what do we tell them? It takes two things, patience and oil. That's right. You gotta have plenty of oil. You're deep, you're almost like the idea of like shallow frying a hash brown or a potato. And you gotta have patience. You gotta let it have time to do its thing, okay? This isn't like a three minute thing and then flip it. It's like 10 minutes and then flip it and then another 10 minutes. Yeah, depending on the temperature of your griddle. All right, here we go. The very first introduction of Shake That. I swear by all purpose seasonings through the process, we got a chance to blend our own spices. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed the other video, we have smashed that for your burgers and steaks and stuff like that. Absolutely 100% stand by this. It's one of those things where I always felt like if you could uh, grab one thing out of your cabinet, what would it be? And so hopefully this will make it into your guys' pantry. If you guys are interested, you guys can check out theflattopking.com. We'll have our shop uh, listed there along with Shake That and the hats. So that goes on there. Three eggs, we're just gonna scramble them and uh, we'll make an omelet out of it. This is one of those things where we talk about the browning on the eggs. How low can your griddle get? How fast do you need to move? Um, we've obviously been able to tell the last few griddles we've had between the Weber and the Traeger that depending on how low your low is, depending on what your eggs can look like and or how fast you have to move. A little telltale sign about hash browns. You notice how there's browning all the way around. When you get here, we don't have the browning around. I'm gonna guess that these two from here over are not ready because of, like we said, the temperature zone. But this one's ready to flip, so we're gonna flip them all at the same time. Not bad on the browning. You can tell it's a little light there. This one's a little bit better. It's actually more even than what I expected, yeah. to be honest. Of course, they've been on there a long time too. So you're talking about 10 to 12 minutes just on one side. All right, you notice I've moved my hash browns right to the inside. That is a part of cooking. That's using your hot zones to your advantage, right? You wanna be able to fry the hash browns. Um, and to do that, you need to get in the hottest part of the griddle, which obviously is right here in the middle, okay? There's my onions and jalapenos. Let's set those aside. All right, we're gonna make a three cheese omelet with a little bit of uh, Canadian bacon. I'm gonna use our colder zones. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the middle part of the grill and just keep this on completely. So everything's cut off except this burner right here. Which is on low. Yes, it's been on low the whole time. We just got a mix of American white and American yellow cheese. Get that Canadian bacon warmed up. Just let that finish cooking right off on the side. We still got that residual heat left over. 
the griddle's off. To give you an idea, the griddle's calmed down about 100 degrees. Uh, the reason why that's important, 425 to 450 is just entirely way too hot to be cooking eggs. So you're talking about maybe 285 to 310, 315, sometimes 325. All right, guys, there you go. That's the big breakfast on the new Blackstone griddle. Uh, definitely learned a lot today, and that's what's the most important is getting those hot zones dialed in so you're more confident when you start cooking. Um, I can say this. Uh, I think I mentioned it on the very first time that we seasoned it. I'm very impressed the way it's seasoned. Not many times I feel that confident, even as many griddles as I do, that the seasoning is going to be um, that great to start off the first cook. This is the first cook. We didn't do a cheesesteak for the first one. I wanted to get right to the temperature zones because that was top of mind to me. With that being said, we used grapeseed oil uh, on our Traeger and we used grapeseed oil on this one. I'll just be interested to see who else is using it. What kind of success have you had? I've always steered in the direction of avocado oil and Crisco, but between my last two seasoning projects, impeccable results. Absolutely just outstanding. So pretty excited about it. Um, feels very, very, very smooth. You guys saw how the eggs reacted. Um, so I'm happy with that. So if you guys are interested, we have a join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Uh, check us out on The Griddle Group on Facebook. It's where comments like this are made all the time. Has anybody tried it out? What about this? What about that? What about the new griddle? And that's what we're here to do. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. I'm ready to eat. Yeah. Is this for me? <laughs> the whole thing? Kids will be happy.